all right all right welcome back and let's continue from where we left off in the last episode so the first thing we want to fix is the fact that we are returning this user so we don't want to return the user we want to format it once we are trying to return a user out so yeah that's something to note so we can come back into our code we want to come back to user so that's what will be representing everything so here we want to have user out or let's just call it user struct and in here we are going to have the email we don't need the bison information here because it's just going to be the output okay and we can have this then in here we want to have another function to convert our user so we have form and we have d into star db because we want to reference it with the db and this will just be to user and this takes in the user parent and it returns the user so maybe we can return a reference to the user instead of returning the old value yeah that makes it more memory managed okay so that's what we want to do and if we come back to our ops so in here we can have the ace.server.db to user and we get this so now let's wait for our server to refresh yeah now it's refreshed we can come back to postman and logged in and now we have this user that's quite straightforward so the next thing we want to do is instead of having this information when we log in we want to give the token and for that we'll be looking at our token flow so we've done this in the past as well we are going to be making use of the jwt package so let's come back to our code let's install the jwt package go get github.com slash golang dash jwt dash jwt so now we have jwt and the next thing we want to do is to come here and we define jwt all right yeah that's for the jwt anyways it's just the jwt so jwt.brew and in here we have package utils so here we want to define a jwt config struct but I will not really use that much name. So if I just do type JWT and it's going to be a struct. So the JWT has access to the config. Yep. So we have um config into config. And we're going to use the config to get our signing key, which we don't have yet. So let's start from that. So the signing key is going to be a type two letter information, which we don't have. So let's just define it signing key so let's make let's one two three two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two so that's started to now so we'll come back to our config we get sign a key so here on to cv we copy this come back to our config the sign in key and now we have the sign in key within our config so next we can come back to the jwt and define the function for a new jwt so from new jwt and it's going to take in the config and we have this so with that every reference we want to make with jwt as the config information so now we can do font jwt generates token which is obviously what we want to do and to generate token we want to generate token against a user email so we are going to have email and it's going to be a string so at the end of the day we can either return a string or an error so for our claim we want to also define a struct to identify that so here we can have type jwt claim so this is just specific to this um package so that's why it's monitored. So here we want to get access to the default JWT standard claims. So JWT standard claims. Then we get the email we want to specify here, which is going to be JSON and Aspari if we want, but that's not necessary. So we need to report JWT here. All right, good. All right, so now we can create a new claim. So claims into jwt claim they will specify the we don't need to specify the standard claim we just need to specify the email which is going to be email and we boot 
So now we can have the token, which is going to be equals to JWT nail with claims. Then we specify the signing method that will specify our claim. Next, we can generate the token string itself, which can also have an error because we are trying to sign it. So here we have the token.sign string, which we have to convert to a byte. We have to convert the signing key itself to bytes. So if there's an error where we try to sign this token, then we return the error. S, we return a token string. Yep, like that. So this is how we generate a token. So the next stage is verify the token. Or rather, validate the token. So let's see what uh, Copilot has generated for us. I'll see if it's what we want. So yeah, this is going to take in the token string, obviously. Then here we have the token JWT pass with claims. Makes sense. We send the token to it. We send our JWT claim as an object. We just define the object. Then we define a function that takes in the token and it happens. So this is more like a callback function. Okay. So this is a callback function. And within here, we want to make some shape. So we just don't want to return this possibility. We want to make a shed to kind of format our error. So here we want to convert our method. We want to convert it to our signing method. So remember, we use this our signing method. So we want to verify that the token we have is still using the same method. So if underscore comma okay into token method, so signing method map, yeah. So that's what we want to do first. So JWT error signature invalid. So we don't want to let the user know that token we've captured that it's no longer using the same signing method. So what we want to do instead, we want to just say that there is an error with your token. So fmt dot error f. Yeah, let's not still open the bag. Let's say invalid token. Yeah, that's better. So next we can just convert it which is just uh, bytes, j dot profit signing key, and yep, we get our data back. So after doing that, if an error still exists, then we want to return the error. Yeah, let's return the error like that. So now we are converting our claims back. Okay, so we are converting the token back to our claim structure. So in the process of trying to convert, if there's an issue again, we specify that there is an error. So in this case, in the process of trying to convert, if there's an issue, we kind of format the error invalid token this time around. Actually, we can format this better. So this is nil. However, I'm going to make this undo. Yeah, so because it's expecting a token or a string, as you can see, this is an interface. We have to convert that to an interface. Or uh, better still, let's ignore it. Let's just have um, an informatted error here. So if I token as well, that's good. So let's ignore that. Yep, it should not be capitalized. So let's remove our capitalization. Okay, so that's better. So finally, we can return the claims.email. So we good. I think the whole structure is okay. So yeah, that's what we want. So now coming back to the opt for our login process. So instead of returning this, we want to return a token. We want to generate an authorization token. So here we can have opt token, which is equals to utils. Or yeah, we are not going to do it that way because the flow to generate, or rather the flow to start a JWT is quite different. As you can see, we have to define a new JWT and all that. So what I'll do is come back to the main. Yeah, let's use the main for that. So we're just going to be sending everything we want uh, to the server. So here we have the JWT from our error, which is equals to utils.newGWT into config. So what's the issue here? Okay, so new JWT is not returning error, it's just returning our JWT. And if that's the case, I don't need we have to we need to define it here. So we can remove it. So we can come back to the server. And now we can extend the server requirements. So this can be GWT. And we have this as utils.gwt. So now within the server, I can have the GWT equals to utils.newgwt into config. And I can have GWT equals to GWT. So that's well defined. So now coming back to my auth, 
I can get out into token equals to a.server.gwt. So there's a possibility of error here. So if error is not new, it's going to be an internal server error, then we return. Yep. So now we have the auth token. And here we're going to change this to token. And we send in our token. Okay, cool. So let's wait for our server to run. All right, so now it's running. We can come back to Postman and login. So now we have authorization token, which we can use to make further requests. So there you go, guys. We have the authorization as well as our validations in place. We're going to stop here for this episode. And in the next one, we are going to be making use of authorization token to get the active marketing user. So stay tuned for that. Bye for now.